everyone i hope you're all well so for today's video i've got something that it's just crazy to think that i'm finally filming this it's crazy to think that when i was pregnant i used to watch this kind of videos like 24 7 i spent so many hours watching this type of video so it's just crazy to think that now i am sitting here and i'm telling you guys my story for today's video i'm gonna be sharing with you guys my experience on my labor and delivery and I don't really know how to begin and where to begin with but <laughs> my due date was on the 3rd of August and I actually ended up going five days overdue which is not too bad like they say that the first baby usually counts between five and ten days but it just felt like forever like the last couple of weeks the last three weeks it just felt like every day was dragging more and more and more and it was really tiring and it was really stressful because I just wanted the baby to come Obviously, I didn't want, I wanted her to come and wish she was ready, but I was just feeling really tired and I was feeling heartburn and I was really short of breath until literally the last day of my pregnancy. So even though I didn't go into labor until actually the 7th, I was having contractions like two weeks before that and I even had a bit of bleeding. And the midwife tells you that if you have any bleeding or anything, the first thing you have to do is call the hospital. So I called the hospital about two weeks before i went into labor and i said that i was having some bleeding so they asked me to go up so they could check on me and then they told me that yep you're having contractions yeah it, it just feels like it's early labor so it could be a couple of days it could be today we don't know you just have to go back home and bring us again when you feel like you're having short contractions and they're closer together so then i went home and I was just waiting for something to happen and nothing really happened so it was a bit confusing, it was a bit stressful but everything changed on the 7th as I said before, Casey had to go to London for an event and it's something that he really 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 needed to attend he just said to me, I'm obviously not gonna go if you're feeling really bad so my whole family was actually here in the UK and he suggested that we all went to Westfields whilst he went to the event because he actually drove up to London so then he dropped us off at Westfields and went straight into his event and on that day I felt awful, I just couldn't walk and I was just thinking to myself I don't really know for how long I can stand doing this because I'm at the stage that I can't walk, I don't really feel like eating anymore which was strange because in the last few weeks of my pregnancy I was eating so much but on that day, on that specific day I just didn't feel like eating, I was feeling really sick I just couldn't walk, even though I was in Westwoods with my family uh, whilst my mum was shopping I was sitting down and then when we had to move on to the next shop I was just sitting down again and I was just like I basically didn't even stand up, I was just sitting down watching them shop and then on that day I just felt like there was something different with me but I just didn't want to get my hopes high just in case nothing was going to happen because I just, I just heard so many times that it could have been a couple of days, it could be at any time and I was just like I'm just gonna try and forget about it and just move on with my day and then just wait until something big actually happen so then Casey finished on his event he went to pick us up from Westfield and then we came back to Brighton we went out for dinner as usual with my family it's funny because my mom was saying like for the last week my mom was saying I'm gonna sleep for makeup on tonight just in case something happens and I'm like mom don't worry nothing's gonna happen it's just just go to just go home go to sleep and if something does happen obviously i'll let you know then i got home and i was really stressed i was really tired and then i just thought i just want to have a bath and then go to sleep and then wake up tomorrow and hope that i feel a lot better so that's that's what i did i had my bath came downstairs normal and then just laid in bed and then i was like kind of like falling asleep and Casey was actually talking to the bump he was talking to the baby that was around half 11 in the night in the evening and then out of nowhere I just heard like a pop like a <coughs> on my stomach and then I thought oh my god what was that and I didn't say anything and for a second it came in my head oh my god this actually could have been my waters breaking but again I didn't want to get my hopes high I didn't want to think like it was actually my waters breaking just in case it wasn't I just got up and then I walked for a little bit to see if something happened, nothing actually happened, no water came down so I was just like okay fine, I just went back to bed and I didn't actually have time to get into bed again because literally within two seconds just water just started coming and it was just coming and coming and I said oh my god and that's when I said to Casey like Casey my, my water is actually broke and then he just looked at me 
and we were both so happy like we just couldn't believe it because we were waiting for so long for something to actually happen and that was it my water's broke and i rang the hospital and i told them that my water's broken and the first thing she said to me was well so just check on what color the fluid is if it's transparent then just come back tomorrow morning around nine o'clock and if they and if it's a different color then just ring me back again and we'll see what we're gonna do. I went in the toilet to check out what color the fluid was because I was actually wearing Casey's trackies. As soon as I looked, it was like a yellowish, greenish color. It was really weird. It so I just came back and I'm running the chair away and I said, Well, this is is a different color, it's like a bit yellowish, greenish, then what do I do? They asked me, Are you having any contractions at the moment? And I said, No, I'm not having any contractions so then they told me that the baby had had poop on me which is actually quite normal and it does happen sometimes it just means that the baby was a bit stressed or it wasn't very happy so that's why she asked me to go up to the hospital so they could check on me and check on the baby just to make sure that everything was okay also because i wasn't having any contractions at the time it could have been that i wasn't actually into labor but they just asked me to go up anyways because it was it was like a different case so then i went up to the hospital I got in the car and Casey and I we were so happy, we were so excited and I was just like yes let's do this, we're having a baby, it's happening, it's finally happening. So then I remember there was so much fluid coming out that I actually had to get like a towel and put it in the car and it still was just loads and loads and loads coming and coming and it was like a really really weird feeling but I was just so excited about it. On the way to the hospital, literally the hospital is like 10 minutes away from me and then that's when I actually started having contractions. So I was having contractions every, no, every like five minutes. So I had two in the car on the way to the hospital. And they were like, they were pretty strong. They were like the ones that I couldn't actually speak through. But it was manageable. I could actually breathe and then just try and focus. It wasn't like too bad at all. But then I got in the hospital and I remember I had to walk through A&E. And there were so many people in there and I just thought, oh my god. What, what were they thinking because I was literally I couldn't really walk so I was just walking like with my legs wide open and I'm pretty sure you could see loads of water dripping down on me but oh well I went up to the triage unit they put me on a CTG and out of nowhere I literally went from like a zero to a hundred I just started having really 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 strong contractions and they were coming every three minutes and the midwife said to me yep it's happening you're definitely going for labor so you're going we're gonna move you up to upstairs which is the unit where people actually give birth i went upstairs and i remember that it's so weird how it just happened so quickly like half an hour beforehand i didn't have any contractions at all and then at that moment i was literally screaming in pain <laughs> and it's weird because a lot of people say that contractions feel like pure pains but a lot was and for me, it just, I didn't feel anything in my stomach. It literally, everything was on my back. So I had really strong lower back pain. The worst part about it is that about two years ago, I actually had an injury on my back. So I've broken two bones in my back. And back pain is something quite common for me. So then during labor, I just feel like it made it a bit worse because it was really, really, really strong and at that stage i was just i was really confused on what was going on because i just did not expect that i expected me to have contractions that were like gonna build up and then get really strong i just didn't expect them to get really strong straight away so it wasn't very fun <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't nice and then that's when the midwife started talking to me about pain relief so she said about different options that they offer you and that's when they gave me gas and air. I've heard so many good things about it. I was so happy because I thought oh, this is gonna help me so much. I'm gonna manage through the pain. But the truth is I absolutely hated gas and air. It was it was just awful. I wish I I didn't do it. Obviously it's always good to try but it just wasn't good at all because what the gas and air does it makes you a bit high. You kind of like don't really know what's going on. I mean I personally felt really lost. I didn't really know what was going on. It actually, it did work a little bit. I didn't it kind of like relieve my contraction, but that was like it helped me for five minutes. And after that, it was just awful. I just feel like it didn't work at all. And at some point, I actually forgot why I was in the hospital. I forgot that I was having a baby. That's how bad it was. 
I would just turn around and say, okay, so like, what's going on? I'm in so much pain, like, why am I here? It, was, it wasn't good. And then that's when the doctors came in to check on me and then they came in to check on the baby as well. That's when we found out that the baby was actually in the wrong position. She was back to back, which means that she was facing up. And the baby usually means she'll be facing down. Then the doctor told me that it was nothing to worry about. That I was having really, really, really strong contractions. My contractions were really close together. So then hopefully by the time that I had to start pushing, the baby would, would have moved and everything was going to be fine. So they checked on me and that's when I found out that I was three centimeters dilated. That to me that normally you go up half a centimeter every hour. So then they were going to leave me there and then just come and check on me again after three hours and then when they said that I just felt like what? you're gonna come and check on me in three hours? I was literally dying that's when they offered me the epidural and I was in so much pain I just said yeah let's just, let's just do it I was really trying really hard I was really trying to breathe but I was in so much pain that every time I had a contraction I remember I was wearing a hoodie I would just put my face like down in a hoodie I just wanted to like cut it up in a little ball because I was in a lot of pain at this stage I don't really remember much, I just remember because of the gas in it, so it's kind of like a bit blurred in my mind. So all I remember is the anesthetic guy coming in and then telling me all of the things about the epidural, telling me all the side effects, asking me to sign something and I just signed it. And So basically what epidural is, is uh, an it's like an anesthetic that numbs you from waist down and the way that they do it is they have to put a needle in your spine and I've heard so many so many people saying that that's a bit painful and everything but honestly I was in so much pain that I didn't even feel any needles or anything I was just sitting there and I was trying so hard not to move they just put a picture on me and I didn't feel anything literally it was just oh. so then after about half an hour that's when the epidural kicked in and I felt a lot better I was still feeling I could tell when I was having contractions but they were not as painful as before so I generally think it was the best thing that it was amazing we were waiting three hours for the doctor to come and check on me again and then between those three hours I was absolutely fine the only thing that kind of happened to me the only kind of like side effects from the epidural is that I was shivering a lot you know I remember I was literally like shaking and I was just asking is this normal? <laughs> and they said to me, yeah, that's absolutely fine. It's just one of the side effects of epidural. And I was so good that I could even like stand up and go to the toilet for a wee and then come back. So that worked amazing for me. Three hours, they just came back in and they checked on me again and they found out that I was actually 10 centimeters dilated. So I was fully dilated after three hours, fully dilated really quickly and they said well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a couple of hours until you can actually start pushing and at this point it was just Casey and I and that was like I just feel like in my head everything just happened so quickly so that's why I'm trying to say as much as I remember and I'll actually ask Casey to come in here in a second to try and help me out but anyways, so then as soon as they said to me, well, we're going to wait a couple of hours until you can start pushing, that's when I rung my mom and I said, mom, this is actually happening, just get ready and come to the hospital. And then Casey obviously rung his mom as well. And that's when my whole family was just getting ready to come and meet us because up to this point, Casey was the only one of me that he was the only one helping me. Mom, and then we were just waiting for them to come in. And that's when things started to go a bit I'm not gonna say wrong, but that's how things decided to go like a bit different than what we planned. The baby's heartbeat actually started to drop quite a lot because the normal heartbeat for a baby is between 110 and 160 and her heartbeat were actually dropping from lower than 80. And it was really weird because they're going low because they're going to 80 and then at some point you will go back up to like 200 which is like really 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 high for a baby and then that's when the doctor decided to worry the little baby wasn't very happy so i was trying different positions i was trying laying down on different sides the midwife just said to me okay actually we're not gonna wait a couple of hours we're gonna start pushing now because we want to get this baby out as soon as possible i just started pushing so then my mom came in the room when i was pushing and i was just pushing and pushing and pushing and then i wasn't actually making any progress because because the baby didn't actually move in the position that she was meant to then I was pushing for I would say like 45 minutes and I wasn't making any progress whatsoever because every time I pushed she would just come back up so I was pushing 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 she was coming down and then after I finished she would just come back up now I just want to pause here because I don't actually remember much that was going on so that's why I'm gonna help 
So that's why I'm gonna ask Casey to come over here and help me out to tell you guys what actually happened. Right guys, so I didn't just bring Casey back in the video. I also bought... Boom! Baby, hello! Hello, hello! You do don't really like hi. the filming light, do you? Oh, you don't really like the filming light. I mean, She's not like... a big fan of the filming light. Yeah. Just gonna say a quick hi to everyone. Yeah, this is the first time on my channel. <laughs> She's like... Okay guys, I'm gonna put her back down because the oh, lights are really strong for her. Yeah. So we're gonna put her back down. So I stopped at a point that the doctors came in and Which I bit? Was the bit where you said you were gonna die or the bit where you didn't know when you sick. was or <laughs> Well <laughs> I was saying to them what happened and now you're coming in and saying a whole different story. <laughs> That's what happened though. No, Honestly, this whole thing that she says is probably a lie because she has no idea what happened. <laughs> no, I'm I joking. said to them, okay, I did say that I hated getting there because I had no idea what was going on. And at some point I just turned out to you and I said, what am I actually doing here because I'm in so much pain. Yeah, that was, no, it, what am I actually doing here? Am I just here to die? Was the actual words that came out of your mouth. <laughs> I, I don't want to actually scare people saying these things, but anyway. So after like 45 minutes pushing, uh, my, at this point my mum got to the hospital, she was in the room with us and the doctor came in and he said actually we have to rush in, we just need to get, get this baby out as soon as possible. Basically they were like, her heartbeat's dropping pretty rapidly and every time you push she's actually going back up rather yeah, than down. That. So they were like, <laughs> we need to take you into theatre straight away, explain what was going to go down in theatre. Pretty much it was... It was really scary. I remember that. We both can't remember what the actual like surgery was called, but they used uh, these things called forceps. And a and, von two. And a von two, yeah. Said that to we me used. that we're gonna take her into fertile, and obviously we want to still try and get a natural birth. So we're still gonna try and do everything naturally, but if it doesn't work out, we're gonna have to move on and do a C-section because we need to get this baby out, basically. Because her so, heart's dropping so fast. Yeah, so I remember then, obviously at this point, my mum had to leave the room and Casey was the only one allowed inside of me because I was only allowed one person. So then they asked me to take all of my jelly off. They asked me to get changed. Casey had to get changed. I, had to, I was dressed like a nurse. It was so yeah, funny. Yeah, Casey had to put on like some doctor clothes on and everything. And I had two Crocs on, but they were like, <laughs> they were both left feet and one was red and one was black. Oh, that's a really important detail. <laughs> that is important. And then at this point, they also said to me that they were going to give me like a stronger anesthetic. So it was like stronger than an epidural. And then it was going to completely numb me from waist down. I just remember feeling really scared. I was literally thinking, oh my god, what is actually going to happen now? Casey was really scared. I was really scared as well, to be fair. And we didn't even take a camera in or anything. We just went straight to theatre. And I remember there was like a lot of people in there. There was like the doctor, there was an anesthetic, and then there was like the... The child doctors and yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, I just remember there was oh, the, a lot of um, people around me. What's it called? The CPR team, um, respiratory respiratory team. In case like her heartbeat did like stop because it was dropping so quick, they were scared. So we went straight to theatre and same thing. And just she's asleep. That's how quick she just goes from awake to asleep so fast so that's when we went into theater and then obviously i just started pushing like i was doing in the room but then at this time the doctor was trying to like pull her out with the von two so von two is like a hoover that like it sucked onto the top of her head and it like, pulled her out pretty much yeah i was doing that for i don't even know how long for me it just felt like two minutes for me it felt like three days <laughs> now it was it was about i i say i reckon half an hour Half an hour? Yeah, I'd say half. I was going to say 40 minutes, but I'd say what, about half in, an hour. in theatre? Yeah. Pushing? Yeah, well, it wasn't just, you wasn't pushing for ages in there either, was you? When we first got in there, it took a while for them to set everything up. And then you started pushing, then we had to stop for a while while they got the Von 2 out, because they wasn't going to use that at first. They were just going to try and use the forceps and use his hands, wasn't they? And then... I don't know. That's why I brought you in, because I don't know <laughs> what, what actually went down. But, uh, half so, an hour. yeah, and then... When the Fonte was working, the thing that pulls her head, it was pulling out, right? And I, I was like holding his hand, just looking at her. And then I was like, actually, I'm a bit interested what's going on. So I was a bit like, went like that, went round the side to have a look like the baby actually being delivered. And this suction thing was just pulling her head and her head, I could just see her head just stretching and stretching. I, I swear, I it literally that. just went like this. And then when her, like, the chin popped out, it went like a, like a, 
water ball or something. It was so weird. And then um, obviously from there, I remember, I remember, yeah, no, I remember there. people saying, oh, she's coming, she's coming. I remember you looking and you just looking back at me, she's out, she's out. Yeah. I was pushing and then they said, oh yeah, she's here. Then the first thing they did is they put her onto me. And at, I the, remember. at this moment, I was absolutely scared. So completely so scared because I didn't even realize she hadn't made a noise. She hadn't even cried or anything. I remember I was just so like it was just so surreal. She was just on me and I was just and they like, put her on me for I like was, one second. Yeah, I was just Literally so just focused. Down like that and took her again. I was just so focused looking at her that I and was like really amazed. I turned then, to one of the doctors and I was like, "What's going on?" And he was like, "Oh, don't worry. She just needs to see the doctor quick." So yeah, really quickly. So they just so, got her off me and then she went straight to the doctors. And then the doctors like cleaned her off and stuff and I was just looking and I was literally so scared and I was just like holding his hand like looking over I was literally thinking what's going on and then all of a sudden she cried and I was like And that was the best <sighs> moment ever because Casey put like his forehead against mine and then we were just both like crying so much It was, it was like a, it was like a movie wasn't it? It was, so it was literally, it was, it was amazing and It's then, like when people say like you can't explain the feeling you have you genuinely cannot explain the feeling, is it? No, it wasn't. It's literally amazing. unexplainable. It's crazy. It's so amazing. we were both just crying our eyes out, really. And we were both so happy. And at this moment, I knew that everything was okay. I knew that she was absolutely fine. So I cut the umbilical cord, but I didn't. Like, I didn't cut it like Off from me. me. Because I think, like, I think that there was something that happened that they didn't really tell us about. Because I, they said to me originally that I was going to be able to cut it out. And then they just did it really quick and took her away and stuff. So that was another thing that scared me, the fact that they just skipped me doing it because I assumed there must have been a problem. But then, like, they still left, like, that much on or something, so I just had to cut it down as low as I could. Pretty much that was what went down there. And then I saw Harlow's feet and I was like... She's got my feet. <laughs> the first thing feet. Casey said to me was, She's got my feet! And I was like... <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, we were both crying and stuff for ages. Nee was crying, I was crying, and then we both sort of stopped crying. Then Nee started holding Harlow, then she was crying, then I was crying, and then we sort of stopped <laughs> crying. Then I was holding Harlow, you, you get what sort of happened. We were crying again, and then they said that they just needed to like finish up everything, like clean up and do your stitches. Yeah, family. Yeah, they were like, do you want to go and show your family? And then everyone was all in one big room and I was like, I walked out into the room like holding her and I wasn't crying and I literally just looked at everyone's faces and everyone just looked like, and I just burst into tears again and then like everyone was crying and everyone was like cuddling up like a big group hug and I was just like... <sighs> <laughs> And everyone yeah, was just like, oh, she's so beautiful. And I was like, oh, oh. This is so <laughs> emotional. Literally, the reason why it took me so long to film this video is because every time I actually try and talk about it, I She's actually just... set up to film this like three times, but she just <laughs> cries too much. Yeah, I just cried too much, so I couldn't really... It's just the hormones. <laughs> but then now that I can finally talk, I explain to you guys what happened in my labour and delivery. Thank you so much, Casey, it's for okay. coming in my video because, as I said, I don't actually... I do remember what happened, but not in, in details, if that makes <laughs> sense. So I really needed your help. <laughs> right, guys. So that is it for today's video. If you haven't already, then make sure to go and check out the vlog because we filmed on the day before. It's going to be on the link down below. And we did film the day before and a little bit of labor and the day after. So that's a really good vlog. It's really emotional as well. So I'm going to leave a link down here below so you can check it out. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're so, so close to 100k, 100K. which is so we're exciting, so close. which is really, really exciting. And please don't forget to comment and I'll see you again with another video next week. Bye.